This is essentially based on work we've done uh, in the UK with uh, one of the major UK retailers uh, for implementation of A2L HFO based uh, products. We all know the phase down, we've all seen the phase down many, many times. Um, this is perhaps slightly different to how we normally see it. This is a representation showing uh, the approximate uh, average GWPs as we step down through the phase down. And you can see quite clearly the reasons why uh, we have to move to lower GWP products in order to maintain uh, the track on that phase down. And you can see as we get to the latter stages of the phase down, the very low uh, GWP products, less than 300, become a very critical part of that phase down. And in particular to commercial refrigeration and retail uh, refrigeration, of course in 2022 there is a, a ban for systems larger than 40 kilowatts for any uh, product refrigerant which has a GWP greater than 150. So again, another reason why this is a, a great focus for commercial refrigeration. The retailers have uh, basically several choices of, of technology they could consider to change away from what they're doing today. Uh, Water-cooled integrals, air-cooled integrals could be an option. Propane glycol loops, 134A pump uh, CO2 systems. The, the non-flammable lower GWP products such as the R449A. Uh, the low GWP systems where you have a refrigerant less than 250 and transcritical uh, CO2 systems. These are all available today to the retailers to, to look at. The retailer we've been working with in the UK, uh, you may not recognize that name, but certainly they're part of the Walmart group, which is uh, definitely an international, very large international group. Their current option is 448A, but they're looking to move away because they realize this is not something which they can maintain going into the future. As you saw from the phase down charts, they have to move away. So what are they considering? Well, they want something which is going to match the cooling capacity at least in, the, in their current systems. They want to match or preferably exceed their energy performance. As we've already heard, energy is a very, very important part of this equation. If you just go to something which is lower, lower GWP but increase your energy consumption, you're actually just making things worse. They want to ma uh, match their current system uptime. Um, many systems which are being uh, put out in the field have uh, not got the same reliability, not the same uptime as they've been used to. So they want to minimize their risk to trade. They also want to either match or improve on their total cost of ownership. So. <laughs> You know, over a period of time not to cost them more money than they're currently spending. And, if that wasn't enough, they also ideally want to be able to match uh, the ease of installation and maintenance. Uh, rightly or wrongly, the, the, the engineering base across the whole of Europe, in the UK as well, uh, and on some levels is not as good as maybe it should be. Um, so they want to make sure that what's being introduced can be worked on by as many engineers as possible without the, the need for additional training or, or complexity in the systems. The client looked very closely at transcritical uh, carbon dioxide systems to start off with. They tried it in their state. However, it did not meet their performance criteria, including the risk to trade element. Um, so they moved on to look for other, uh, other options. Those other options were based on studies done by independent consultants looking at the various technologies and how they compared in terms of energy efficiency, 10-year life cycle costs, and also total emissions to, to atmosphere in terms of you know, obviously including energy leakage and uh, uh, all the things involved with operating the system. On that basis, they, they, they moved forward and chose two potential options. They, look, they were looking at 454C, which has a GWP less than, 148, uh, less than 150, so it satisfies the 2022 F-gas requirement. That would mean they would have no restriction on the system size uh, after that uh, F-gas ban comes into place. From theoretical calculations, there was a significant improvement in COP, so they could uh, improve their energy performance if, if that proved to be the case in practice. 
um, and they would maintain ease of installation and maintenance. However, as you can see on the chart, there is a lower capacity with the uh, 454C. Uh, and both the options being looked at are A to L flammable, so there was some extra complication because of that. They also considered the 454A, which has a slightly higher GWP, 238. Um, that puts it above the, the F gas 150 level, so it means there would be some uh, need to control the size of the systems which were being used to less than 40 kilowatts after 2022. Um, but they, they also maintain the ease of installation um, and, the other, and the energy efficiency gains that they are looking for as well. So they eventually chose to look at the 454A as an option for their uh, study. Now, as they are A2L, obviously charge size compliance becomes a very important part of the overall consideration. Um, EN378 has already been mentioned. Um, within Appendix C of EN378, there's a whole section about charge sizes. Um, this rather complicated chart kind of summarizes all of that. But basically, with this type of product, with uh, the 455A in particular, with, uh, if you apply in 378 without any additional protective measures, you can go up to around 10.8 kilograms. Now, that's clearly not enough refrigerant to run uh, a large supermarket pack from. But under the Annex C3, um, you're able to increase that by adding additional protective measures uh, to the system. Uh, leak detection plus uh, a number of other stipulations apply. And that can take the, ch the, the available charge up to 54 kilograms for the R54, uh, or R454A. And this was felt manageable for the ASDA systems. Um, as we, and so we've moved forward on this basis. ASDA had already moved to a, a distributed system design. They'd already, uh, they were already doing this um, four-pack system with 448A. Um, each one of those packs, or the medium temp packs, could have been up to 80 kilowatts in their normal design. So what they've done is they've split each pack into two separate packs. You can see the picture here. This is, uh, in terms of how it looks from the external, it looks almost identical to what they had before, but that is two separate systems. It has Emerson compressors inside, scroll compressors, A2L ready inside. It's PED compliant. This is designed for use with an A2L system. And you can see the store layout here, very typical, um, certainly UK type uh, store. And this particular pack is, is operating on just on the medium temp at the moment. Um, so all the risk assessments have been done uh, in order to be able to move forward and use this product. And the design uh, criteria is allowed this particular system is actually well less than 54 kilograms. I think it's, it's just less than 40 kilograms of refrigerant in that system. Uh, and with all the other, uh, the leak detection which is installed, and as I said, it's all compliant with PED and regulations, then they were good to go. I've mentioned risk assessment. It's really important. EN378 compliance does not mean you comply with uh, the risk assessment uh, rules and regulations. So it's really important in all these situations risk assessments are done, and certainly there's the standards are out there that EN 60079-1-10 uh, lays out what needs to be done. You can see the charts here for the, for the ASDA case which we were looking at in terms of zoning and, and risk assessment. Initial performance data, the, 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 product, the, the system's been running since uh, February uh, with the 454A. Here is a this is on 448A, this is on uh, 454A. I think you'll struggle to see much difference between the, the, the way the two systems performed. However, energy performance has shown that on top of the, the energy saving that you're getting when using products such as 448 or 449, we're actually seeing a further 3.5% uh, energy saving over 448A using the 454A. So we've achieved all the things which ASDA were looking to achieve in terms of looking for a replacement option. So, in conclusion, utilizing very low GWP2L blends in distributed commercial systems is a viable and safe option to replace traditional high GWP refrigerants with minimal design changes. Compliance with environmental regulations such as FGAS uh, in Europe and, and later on in Kigali um, 
can be achieved, they're not barriers, and EN 378 and ATEX regulations are also not barriers to introducing these products for commercial refrigeration. The very low GWP A2L HFO blends may well have the lowest total emissions and lowest life cycle costs, meaning that widespread use of technology will not have to, be, will not have, to have a, a, an impact in uh, lowering the um, climate change emissions. You can achieve the lowest and, and most cost-effective uh, emissions reductions using this technology. And that's it. Thank you.